for EpicureCloud.com. I also represent KitchenAid on QVC. And by request, we're making basic white bread today. This is gonna make two loaves of white bread. So in the bowl of my KitchenAid stand mixer here, I have one cup of warm water, one teaspoon of sugar that I stirred together with uh, two packets of yeast. I'm using active dry yeast because that's what they had at the store and I was only able to get the one packet. So I had to measure two and a quarter teaspoons out of this jar. If you have the jar kind, you wanna keep that in the refrigerator. Maybe mark the date you open it up on the top and um, it keeps for six months. So two and a quarter teaspoons equals the same amount in one packet and you need the equivalent of two packets. So I stirred it together with the warm water and the sugar and it's starting to foam and get frothy and that's how you know that your yeast is active. If all you have is instant yeast or rapid rise yeast, you can use that also, but you really don't need to do this step. You can add it right with your dry ingredients. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're gonna add some of our flour and I'm just gonna use basic all-purpose flour here. Um, in this bowl, I have six cups and I'm just gonna start off with about four cups and then just add more as needed. I'm using this glass bowl here so I can show you the action inside the bowl. This is a six quart stand mixer, but you could use um, other stand mixers or you could even knead this by hand, which is fun and you get your workout in as well. So this is that spiral knead dough hook. And whenever you're using the dough hook, speed two is a great speed to use. That's the recommended speed to use for your stand mixer. So if you are mixing this by hand, you would be pulling the flour and the liquid together there until it starts to form kind of a shaggy mass. So about now I can add in the rest of my liquid ingredients. So in here, I warmed up in the microwave one cup of milk, and then I added in three tablespoons of sugar, two teaspoons of salt, and four tablespoons of butter. And you want to warm up the mixture enough that you can stir and dissolve the sugar and melt the butter, but you don't want it to be over 110 degrees because that could kill the yeast. So I do always check my um, mixtures with a thermometer. If you don't have that, you can just feel it. You want it to be lukewarm, not hot at all. So we're gonna add that mixture in. Make sure your sugar is all dissolved so that all gets added as well. And then we're gonna continue to mix on speed two. And first it's gonna form kind of a shaggy mixture and then it'll start to come together and do the kneading action. So I can see right now it's still very, very wet. So I'm gonna add some more flour. Let me lower the bowl here. I'm gonna add in a whole other cup here, maybe a little bit more, and let that do the work. So with a stand mixer, it needs much more quickly. All about five minutes. If you were to knead by hand, it might take you know, 10, 15 minutes to get the same action. Okay, so it's really pulling together now, doing a great job. So what you're looking for is, it'll eventually start to clean the sides of the bowl um, with this particular bread dough. Not all doughs will clean the side of the bowl. It depends how much moisture to flour ratio you have in there. And you kind of want to let it do the work. Let the flour absorb the liquid. Don't be too hasty to add too much flour or liquid at the beginning because sometimes it takes a little time for the flour to absorb. So it is definitely starting to pull together. I think I might want to add maybe a tablespoon or two more of flour. Let me just get this spoon wipe off here. I can see that it's cleaning the bowl here on the sides. 
I added just a tiny bit more flour and I'm going to just let it go here for a couple minutes and see how it does. In my opinion, I always want it to be a little wetter rather than too dry. And I think we're pretty good to go. It is really starting to clean the sides of the bowl. It's kneading. Um, it's okay if it clings a little bit to that dough hook. Um, I think we're in good shape. So again, we're kneading on speed two. And this is about how much flour I did not use. So depending on the weather, it's kind of rainy here today, depending on the type of flour that you use. You could use bread flour for this recipe too, but you might need a little bit more liquid. So it's always good when you're making doughs, like bread dough, to have a little extra flour and a little extra water on hand, but only add a tiny bit at a time. Um, but I think this is going to be beautiful. So we're just going to let that go, and when you want to, you can stop and give it a feel. So it's a little tacky, not super sticky, it's not sticking to my fingers really. Um, so I'm going to let that go a little bit longer and see where we are in just a couple minutes. doing so you just want to feel it it feels nice and soft it's a little warm to the touch it's tacky but it's not sticking to my fingers and I think we're good to go when I'm pulling it off the dough hook you can see kind of some stringy stretchy parts that's where um, the gluten is getting all stretchy and activating here so let me take this dough hook off and I can show you what it looks like. Oh, it's going to be so good. Here, let's take that bowl off. And we're going to get that out. Oh, look at that stretch. That's awesome. All right, so I just want to gather this all together. Let me just scrape off the bottom here the last little bit. We don't want to waste any. to pick up the rest. So again, it's tacky for sure, but it's not overly sticky. It's not making a mess of my hands. So what I want to do next, so real nice, soft, supple, much softer from the time that I started. It's so much fun. It's kind of molten almost. So I'm just kind of forming it into a ball. I'm just kind of tucking the ends under as I go here. So you can see that nice ball of dough here. It's nice and smooth. It just feels wonderful. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to take any old bowl. We could even use the mixer bowl. And I just um, brushed the inside with some oil. So you just wanna put the dough in your bowl, give it kind of a twist. You wanna get a little oil on the top and then you wanna turn it so the oiled side is facing upward. And this is gonna help the dough not form a skin and um, stick as it does its rising. So then I took a piece of plastic wrap. You could also use a kitchen towel. And I actually used some nonstick spray and I sprayed it. You could brush some oil or rub some butter on there too. So I'm just gonna cover that bowl with that wrap and the yeast is going to um, form carbon dioxide, and that's what's gonna cause the bread to rise. So I'm just gonna put this in a warm place to rise. Depending on the warmth in your kitchen, it could take anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. You just want it to double in size. So um, I'm gonna set this to rise, and then I'll come back and show you what we have. And after that, we're gonna form our loaves. All right, I'll be back. Take care. Hi, we're back. It's been about an hour and you can see that the dough is very happy. I had a smoothie, I emptied the dishwasher, answered a few emails and we're good to go. So let's take a look at our dough. You can see that it filled up the bowl there. It took about an hour. 
I usually put my dough on the countertop under my um, under my um, cabinet lights that give off a little bit of heat and that does well for me. So it's beautiful. You can see how it's just resisting a little bit. So, so beautiful. So we want to put a little bit of flour. This was the leftover flour from um, when we made the dough. I just want to lightly flour my surface here. You can do this right on the countertop. I happen to have the silicone baking mat that I really like. You don't want to um, work too much extra flour into the dough, so just a light sprinkling. And then um, we're just gonna kind of press the dough down a little bit here. When it says punch down the dough, you don't really wanna punch it like crazy. So um, let's see, I'm just gonna scrape this out of the bowl here. Look at that. Oh, that is gorgeous, okay. So remember, this is going to make two loaves of bread. So I'm just going to want to cut this in half. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball it here with my bench scraper. If you don't have a bench scraper, you can just use a knife. Those look wonderful. And then we'll move this guy over here. Hello there. Okay. All right. So this guy, so what you want to do is you just want to kind of gently, and it'll kind of deflate just by working with it, which is good. That's what you want to happen. So you want to fit it in your loaf pan here. And for a one pound loaf of bread, you want to use the eight inch pans. If you use the nine inch pans, your loaves are not going to be as high. If you don't have pans, you could just kind of go a little free form there, form it kind of into a log. Um, so you want it to be about as wide as the pan. All right, so I'm gonna take the top half here and just kind of fold that over. I'm gonna take the bottom half here, just kind of stretch, kind of gently fold that over, just kind of tucking as I go here. And I just wanna form like a nice loaf that's gonna fit in the pan. So grab that and just kind of tuck that in there. Pat it down a little bit gently into the corners because you want it to rise up evenly. So that guy looks happy in there. And now we'll work with this guy. The dough is really beautiful. I mean, it's hardly sticking at all. It's really soft and warm and tender. So again, let's fold that kind of top third over and this bottom third over. That looks gorgeous. And I'm just kind of rolling, rolling it over, kind of making a log shape. You really can't go wrong. It's nothing to worry about. So then we're just gonna place this guy and these pans I sprayed with nonstick spray. You could brush them with oil butter shortening. You just want your dough to be able to rise up and not be stuck to the pan. So I'm just kind of pressing down so it's nice and even and those are good. I have some plastic wrap that I greased just in the center there so that I can cover. Now I don't wrap it tightly around the pan because it's actually going to puff up and I don't want the dough to be restricted by the plastic wrap. So I just kind of lightly drape it over top so that as it rises up, the plastic will just move with it. So there's one, there's my other plastic here. Just lightly drape that over. I'm gonna put these back into my warm spot um, usually it's a little bit of a shorter time here, so we're going to start looking at these in about 30 minutes. And what you want to happen is you want the dough to rise up and mound no more than an inch above the pan. I'm going to look at about maybe three quarters of an inch. Sometimes I even get in there with a ruler and measure it. So um, my ovens take a little while to preheat, so I'm going to preheat mine now to make sure that they're at the proper temperature and I'm setting those to 400 degrees. Okay, we'll be back. Thank you. 
Hi, okay, it's been 30 minutes and it looks like our loaves have risen perfectly here. Remember, you don't wanna go over an inch above the pan and we look to be about uh, three quarters of an inch. So I'm just gonna carefully take off the plastic wrap. Don't want to deflate anything. And over here, you can just bake them as they are if you want. You could brush them with melted butter before you bake them. I like to brush them with um, an egg wash. So it's just one beaten egg and one tablespoon of water mixed together. And it gives um, the bread a really nice, browned, almost shiny texture. So you just wanna brush that gently so as not to cause the loaf to deflate. And these are gonna be so good. So my oven's preheated to 400 degrees and you want the oven rack to be on the lower side because as the loaves are baking, you want the top of the loaf to reach about the middle part of the oven. So I think my oven rack is on the second to the bottom um, shelf so that when the bread bakes and rises, it'll be like right in the center of the oven. Okay, you won't use all of the egg wash, just a little bit. You could save the rest for your scrambled eggs. Okay, so we're all coated here and we're ready to pop them in the oven. And I do recommend um, I always use a little separate oven thermometer in my oven to check the temperature because my ovens are never um, where they're supposed to be. I probably should have them calibrated, but I keep one of these in and um, then I know that I'm at the proper temperature and they're usually under $10 wherever you can buy um, kitchen supplies. So I'm gonna take these over, put them in the oven and uh, we'll be back. They're gonna bake for about 30 to 35 minutes at 400 degrees. All right, I'll be back. Okay, our bread's all done. It took um, 30 minutes in the oven. I probably could have taken it out a little bit less, so I'm gonna make a note for the next time. And I do use my instant read thermometer to double check, because it's hard to tell when bread is done. So um, I just do this in the oven. So you can just insert the thermometer into the center of the loaf there. And when it's about 195 degrees, um, it's done. Okay, so I let them cool for 10 minutes in the pan and then I'm just going to take them out. Yum, smells so good. Open my timer's about to go off there. So I'm just gonna pop these out. Now you don't want to slice them until they're totally cool um, because you don't want it to get all gummy from the steam and all. So resist the temptation. You let them cool until it's just barely warm to the touch and then you can enjoy your fresh homemade white bread. So thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, this is Tina Varelli for EpicureCloud.com. Um, I also represent KitchenAid on QVC. So give me a thumbs up if you liked my video. Um, subscribe to get notified um, when I make more videos. And for the full recipe, visit my website, EpicureCloud.com. There's our timer. We must be done. All right, everyone. Happy baking. Take care.